Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about a nasty storm system that's going to bring severe weather to the plains as well as some flooding conditions and then chilly air behind a very strong May cold front. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Here is the overall uh, surface map for Thursday, uh, May the 6th. Uh, you can see we've got a tailing uh, front out here in the Gulf. That's elongating over here in Florida. That's bringing some very heavy rain uh, for them down to the south. We've got some sporadic showers that's happening today in much of like Arkansas, much of the Tennessee Valley, getting into the Ohio Valley. Pretty dry across the midsection of the country. But we are watching a pretty strong cold front that's going to be entering the picture off the uh, the Pacific Northwest. And that's going to be our culprit for some severe weather as we head into Saturday. But as we go into uh, Friday, you can definitely see that tailing front keeps sagging south. Now that'll bring the showers down here into Miami. Uh, we have that other tailing front that's bringing just some, you know, off and on showers to uh, New Mexico, getting into the portions of the plains itself. And then, all, then we have some, some chillier air that's going to be entering the picture uh, off the uh, the northeast coast and we could see some just uh, some you know lake effect type snow happening and way upstate new york along the, along the uh the great lakes here but then yes we're looking at into our pacific northwest that's where we can see actually some snow starting to fly behind this pretty strong cold front that's going to be entering the picture off the pacific northwest as we go into the day on a friday and then as we go into Saturday, yeah, we've had some southwest winds that are going to be surging out ahead of this front. And that's going to be setting the stage along the dry line and uh, that triple point where that sector is going to meet, uh, where that cold front, we could be under the gun for some severe weather uh, for much of the plains, uh, getting into portions of Missouri with some snow flying in the higher elevations of uh, Idaho as we go into Montana and to Wyoming as well. So yeah, if you can definitely see, uh, the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted that chance, and it's a pretty pretty significant chance actually for large hail. When you ever see this hatched risk zone, which we've seen a lot so far this season, that typically implies that you have that instability in, in the upper atmosphere that creates those bigger hailstones that we're talking potentially, you know, golf ball, tennis ball, uh, up to potentially some baseball size hail uh, going to be happening potentially on uh, Saturday into portions of uh, Wichita going into Enid as well as uh, Hutchinson, Kansas and uh, Emporia. All these areas are going to be under the gun for that little bit higher chance of seeing that larger hail fall from the sky. Uh, but even in the outskirts of Wichita going into uh, portions of Lawrence, Kansas as well, you're still under that slight risk of seeing that quarter size hail or possibly above. And this is all three modes of severe weather as well as uh, we could see some isolated tornadoes, uh, some heavier winds of 60 to 70 miles per hour. But you can see the tail that's going to be tailing off. It, it, there could be a tail uh, with those warmer conditions down to the south end, Texas, yeah, it's not out of the questions. We could see some severe weather all the way down along the dry line into Midland, going into Abilene, as well as uh, portions of uh, Wichita Falls, and getting into the Oklahoma City area as we go into the day on uh, Saturday before that uh, pretty strong cold front uh, that's going to be sagging uh, southward. And you can see the depiction on where the temperatures are going to be by the time we go into Sunday. You can see that colder colder anomalies are trying to enter the picture uh, from the north. We've got that warm surge out ahead of it. That's going to be setting the stage for that severe weather event on a Saturday, but that will continue uh, pressing southward as we go into the day on Sunday. And that could set the stage for more severe weather and around the Dallas-Fort Worth area, extending more into uh, the Oklahoma City, uh, getting into portions of uh, Missouri as well as uh, Arkansas as we go into the day on a Sunday, because look at the dew points. Uh, the dew points are gonna be surging from the south. I mean, we're talking 70s are gonna be entering the back picture back again in portions of Houston, getting into the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Those uh, higher dew points will just keep it extending into uh, Arkansas, getting into portions of uh, Missouri. So anywhere you see where the 60s are, yeah, you could be susceptible to seeing those stronger uh, severe thunderstorms taking advantage 
of that daytime heating and that clash in temperatures ahead of that very uh, strong cold front that's going to be coming through on a Sunday because as we go into the afternoon you can see the demarcation line it starts to slow down as this cold front continues to press a little bit further south all indications are it looks to possibly stall somewhere in and around uh, North Texas possibly maybe even south uh, southeastern portions of the Dallas Fort Worth area setting the stage for for some training convecting thunderstorms out here in uh, East Texas uh, getting into uh, portions of Louisiana going into Arkansas uh, Missouri going into the Ohio Valley here with some heavier rains uh, going into a uh, you know Sunday afternoon Sunday evening time frame and this will continue to push off uh, further into uh, Monday this will be along the coast so you could be seeing some looking at some more severe weather by the time we get into Monday afternoon Monday evening Evening and portions of uh, Houston you know along the coast here in the southeast into Louisiana uh, Mississippi Alabama going into Georgia here uh, portions of uh, Kentucky into West Virginia we also have yet another disturbance that's actually going to be diving down uh, from the northwest and, and keeping that cold cold air keep funneling into the picture and slowly but surely we'll sag just a, a little bit further south and that second push is actually even a stronger push uh, than the first one so it's going to be a lot of instability in the atmosphere for several days to come because here's the temperature anomalies by the time we get into Monday like I mentioned I think that front stalls in around somewhere around North Texas possibly maybe to the south some of the data this is the European model the GFS has a little bit further north of this but either way that front is stationary setting the stage for those over overrunning conditions over uh, North Texas and to uh, into the central Texas of some of those uh, stronger uh, heavier rains uh, even through the day on uh, Monday and it could be a step down process with some chillier temperatures as the cooler air continues to funnel just a little bit further south so yeah you can definitely see the anomalies here of 10 15 and now we're getting with that second push of colder air that's going to be under the plains 25 degrees below average temperatures this is may folks this is some chilly stuff uh for may that's going to be uh you know entering by the time we get into monday there's that tuesday disturbance as it continues off the northwest flow uh, out ahead of it will that like i mentioned that boundary will set across somewhere around north texas into south southeast texas uh, with those warmer temperatures down here but there's going to be a, a big difference of a 20 degree jump depends on where you live uh, from south to north with that cold front just kind of stalling along that boundary so yeah we could be looking at some you know like i said that overrunning conditions into portions of texas especially into oklahoma uh, getting into kansas going into the day on uh, tuesday as that first front uh, uh, pulls through through uh, Florida with some leftover showers in portions of uh, the Northeast as well. So yeah, you can see the temperature anomalies as we go to uh, Tuesday. That boundary just yes, there's that stalling front of that difference of temperatures of a good to 20 to 25 degrees difference depends on where you live with that stalling front. But with that second front, yeah, you can definitely see chilly stuff for much of, of Colorado, getting into Nebraska, portions of Kansas again. Now we're seeing 25 uppers to 30 degrees below average temperatures. So this is, you know, we're getting into the middle of May, and I can't believe we're even talking about 25 to 30 degrees, you know, below average type temperatures is even on the table. Uh, but yeah. This will go through the Ohio Valley with those 10 to 15 degree below average temperatures as we go through. These are highs as we go through the day on uh, Tuesday, and that will continue to sink uh, further south. There's Wednesday. So that second push is a little bit stronger push, and I think that one actually clears uh, North Texas and goes through uh, Central Texas and gets down to the further to the south uh, with those overrunning conditions of some heavier rains entering uh, further further south this time going into portions like San Antonio uh, getting into Austin area and that and that will dive deeper down into the southeast uh, uh, portions of the U.S. and there's those colder push yeah there's 10 uh, to 15 uppers to almost 20 degrees below average temperatures with the second push with that colder air penetrating a little bit further south this time and that that will you will start to feel the effects as we go into wednesday of those colder temperatures possibly in like say austin getting into even portions of san antonio with uh with them cooler temperatures 
even into the southeast but yeah you can definitely see uh, out west there with those warmer anomalies it continues to remain dry off the west coast and continues to remain uh, warm where they're definitely going through a drought out there but yeah there's that front there's that second cold front of the week by the time we get into next thursday of those heavier rains extending all the way further down to the south getting into portions say brownsville getting into houston back into louisiana and to portions of the southeast that'll be elongating into the carolinas getting into the virginia states as well as the portions of uh, Pen pennsylvania as we go into uh, thursday there's your anomalies again with that second push it starts to fade a little bit you know as you go further southeast so i don't really think it, any of that colder air makes it to Florida, unfortunately, but you can definitely gonna feel pretty nice uh, over here in the in, into the southeast with those uh, you know five to ten to possibly upwards fifteen degrees uh, below average temperatures at times. And there's that ridge continue to build in from the west of uh, those warmer temperatures funneling in off the uh, Pacific Northwest. There's that rain by the time we get into Friday uh, with that chill, uh, with that cooler temperatures, and that'll be extending all the way up into the northeast now with those heavier rains, light to moderate rains, extending all the way through, uh, you know, Pennsylvania, get into upstate New York along the coast here, the I-95 corridor, uh, into uh, into the northeast with those heavier rains. Uh, by the time we get into Friday of next week. But yeah, there's the stage for your next, you know, seven days as far as the precipitation goes. It's bone dry out west. They're going to be dealing with those warmer anomalies. You can't buy a drop in California, unfortunately. Uh, but those warmer temperatures will be entering into the southwest. I mean, I, Phoenix hit 100 degrees yesterday. So it's just, it's just going to be inundating with a very long summer, hot summer ahead for them. And they're going to be dealing with those rains starting in, into Texas. And that will could be some flooding rains as we go into portions of East Texas, depending on where that where that boundary sets out with that cold front that's going to be stalling uh, throughout the week, especially as we go into Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. So really those four days could be seeing a very active time frame in this, this next sector of the country uh, with some de definitely heavier rains elongating on much of the southeast, getting into the Ohio Valley and some portions of uh, the northeast as well. And you can see Florida down here misses out much of the action with, with, uh, with that cold front just really not making it. Uh, down there for them. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, definitely like this video. Uh, definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.